Hello and welcome back to the Sam Beast YouTube channel. My name is David Foxen and I've got another ITAM short interview with Sean Ashbury, the ITAM recruitment guru. This is actually probably one of the best videos I've done so far because in this interview, Sean discusses how you can make yourself stand out from the crowd when applying for ITAM roles and also what the market is looking like at the moment post coronavirus pandemic. This was recorded uh, earlier this year, so it might be a little bit out of date, but there's an awful lot of good information in there. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It honestly means a lot to me. Uh, and we hope to see you again in another video here at the Sand Beast YouTube channel. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I've seen that already. Um, a number of my roles actually are already and have been throughout the, uh, throughout the pandemic that they've changed them all. We can't use them in the, in the office, so they can be based anywhere as long as they're based within that country. Um, so, yeah, 100%, I mean, it, it probably will become easier, but then again, they're probably going to make it so specific that they want this particular profile because they can, because they can take a pick from the entire country. So it's, uh, yeah, depends where you look at it. I'm, I'm more of an optimist, it's going to be easier. <laughs> Yeah, you say like country as well, but, you know, eventually we may even get to a point. I mean, some um, companies already are saying, OK, well, the the SAM team's based in the UK, but we're like a European or global company. As long as they're within an hour or two hours in terms of time zones, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not really fussed where they are as long as they've got the skill set. It's yeah. From your perspective, then. You say it's going to make your job easier, but also at the same time, you're going to have so much more scope and mm -hmm. people to try and find. And I think organisations are going to be a bit more picky and selective because they have got that wider talent pool that I think you're really going to have to uh, earn your keep to uh, yeah. weed out the copy and paste job CVs for the proper the proper gurus. Right. But it's exciting for you. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah, no, 100%. I mean, well, it's exciting for everyone in the industry, to be fair, because if you've got I guess location barriers for previously with people kind of maybe families or, or sort of stuck to a certain area for whatever reason. Um, London was in Reading, London, the surrounding area probably was the epicenter, apart from uh, sort of in the north of the rest of York, etc. But in these were the places that Sam Jobs were. Now you've got say the opportunity to expand it to across the UK, this is UK speaking, of course, UK centric, but like that, that you get my point. This should open it up for people who want to get into ITAM or who have had a taste of it and want to still continue to do it but don't want to stay with their current company. So for sure, I mean, this makes it quite exciting, as you say, for, for me, for, for them, for everyone. So um, yeah, roll on the remote remote life. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I never, I never understand, I kind of understand why, but why on earth these big SAM consultancies, you know, software houses, all have their main offices in like Bracknell or Slough or like that kind of, that, that belt was just like, it's nowhere near as attractive as in the US with, you know, San Francisco and California and stuff, it's like Bracknell, Slough, Reading. <laughs> Like, I mean, no offense to anyone that is there, but <laughs> if you've ever been there, it doesn't quite have the same vibes. So, yeah, remote working. If you want to work for a company that's based it's, there, it's, it's up and coming, right? <laughs> if you say so, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, exciting times ahead within the SAM world, um, and in terms of, you know, hopefully more jobs opening up and being uh, a lot more flexible. On the flip side of that, we've also, you know, I'm sure you've seen it on your LinkedIn as well, a lot of people posting that unfortunately they've lost their ITAM or, or SAM job because of the coronavirus. What kind of advice would you have to people that are now looking for another job in the SAM world to, as a recruiter, to make them stand out? What is it that you're looking for when you want to pass on a client's, de um, an, an applicant's details to your clients? Um, yeah, I guess we go going back to work. What we were saying before, I and mean, if you want to become more visible in the market, interact on LinkedIn. Um, that's a big way. Show off the fact that you can provide value. Um, I mean, if you're able to get involved in the discussions or even start discussions yourself, um, that shows. I mean, if if you can do the job, you can say <laughs> say that you can. <laughs> you can provide this help and advice for sure. Um, 
Ian, as far as sort of CVs wise and such, like more the experience that I'm looking for. Um, the, the, the big thing is that you're able to independently manage projects. Yeah. Um, let's just kind of say generically this person's six to seven years, for example, because um, that's generally kind of the type of people that I, I've, I've been seeing six, seven years or plus. Um, the, the, the main thing is that you're able to showcase the fact that you've got this ability to independently manage pro software asset management projects develop strategy innovation within those um uh, or the states that you've been working on you're able to provide sort of technical hands-on licensing expertise going back to it that's still it's still a thing it may be more it's maybe more of a sort of software asset management holistic approach but certainly software licensing is still a thing um, yeah. again if you're more sort of technical and you're looking at the, the implementations of software asset management tools again that's still a big part of it. Um, I mean, you can look at the process of how you would to how you would manipulate a software asset management tool to make it easier for the software licensing guys or um, for you to provide insight as to how to offer software asset management yeah, solutions or, or, yeah. or innovations, as we say. And that's the main thing to so make sure you, you get that out there. Um, put that on your CV. Uh, you don't have to say everything, but just make sure that that sort of stuff is is there. Because if you want jobs out there, are mainly consultancies. Yeah. Um, so you need to be able to provide that you're able to perform a, a consulting job. Yeah. So if you've worked in two, three estates. Um, you've provided X, Y, Z um, uh, or project work that you've been involved with or your individual contributor or uh, managing of and developing, you can use that experience to consult. Yeah. That's how you become a consultant. You don't have to have been, I guess, all the nicey-nicey the, the, the consulting advisory sort of, the way you do it can be taught, but the knowledge that you have can't be. So that's something that you need to shout out about and put that on your CV. And when I ask you questions, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you mentioned LinkedIn. Do you look at LinkedIn as well then to try and um, look, look through groups and posts and replies, etc., to kind of get a better understanding on on the candidates' capabilities? It certainly helps. Yeah, um, and. You, LinkedIn profile or CV doesn't tell you much. Let's be honest. It's yeah. it, it's kind of it's it, as I say, a CV is purely a signpost for me for the interviewers to ask you questions. It's not the piece of paper that will get you the job. It will get you an interview. It will get you through the door, but it won't get you a seat at the table. So yeah. LinkedIn's a good way for people to understand how knowledgeable or how passionate um, and yeah it, it, it certainly gives me more visibility of your profile and if you're interacting with people like yourself or other kind of leaders within the sort of software asset management industry providing insight then certainly I know you're probably you're, you're fairly good because you're able to hold your hold your own yeah um, and offer decent insight yourself and not being and that's and, 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 and that's what we want I mean we want to know so it helps. Yeah, this, this may be a bit of an unfair question then but would you say it's at your kind of uh, disadvantage not to be on LinkedIn nowadays like if you got um, a CV through from someone who's you know you, you're you're well connected in the ITAM world if you've got a CV through from someone who you actually cannot find on LinkedIn and you've not heard of them before obviously you wouldn't discriminate but is that kind of like at their detriment that they're not out there they're not interacting with other people and you know they're, they're kind of just offline if you like mm -hmm. I, mean, I wouldn't say that's a negative but it may be a negative to where you're applying to Right. The reason for that is that maybe this consultancy wants that visibility of their people. For example, just just hypothetically for consultancy based on the fact that that's where the jobs are. Um, if this consultancy may want you to be visible on LinkedIn yeah. because as a consultancy, they need their staff to be part of 
the culture and that culture invariably is on LinkedIn because that's yeah. where the posts are being made, where business is being made. So if they can't turn around and suggest to, oh, Joe Blogs is going to be helping you um, on this project, they don't have anything. They can't look yeah. at this person. Um, and it, 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 I wouldn't say it's, it's a problem for me, but certainly if you want to be involved with business development or any form of um, consultancy, which generally does have that level of this, or maybe some of them do, then you certainly need to be on LinkedIn.